All our lives, we've been told to go to school, get good grades, get a good job, and you'll be set. How's that working out for you? I'm Tavana Denise, physical therapist turned life and business coach, and I'm on a mission to help you create a life you love and a business on your terms. If you want more time, more freedom, more flexibility, I can help you create it. Welcome to Breaking Protocol, the show for women in healthcare who want more. Here we are in the Breaking Protocol live filming of this podcast, right? And I hesitated to call this episode Follow Your Gut to Find the Money, but I wanted to keep it real with you all because I believe it's true, so I'm sticking with it. People ask me all the time how to figure out what they should do. What idea is the right one to choose? When everyone is hollering, you need to be on social media, you need to be on Instagram, you need to be posting, like, but you feel awful when you do it. You feel like it's a distraction. You have a super resistance to doing it. It just feels yuck. That might be a clue, right? And I can coach you around your mindset and things about why you feel the way you do, but why would we go, why not just go through the path of least resistance, at least when you're starting out, right? So I hosted the first ever, at least the first that I'm aware of, online business summit for women in healthcare last weekend. And it was amazing, if I do say so myself. Seven women, six of which who were in healthcare, are or were in healthcare, got together to give their time and their talent to other women in healthcare. And it was really just to help people understand that you have options of who you listen to, who you get mentorship from, who you get advice from, and you have options about what you can do right now today in the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And one of the main things that the attendees kept asking was, how do I know if an idea is worth pursuing? How do I know that I'm going to get a return on my investment? And first of all, I think this is the wrong approach and the wrong question to ask, right? Especially when you are just starting out or adding a new line of service to your business. Because the truth of the matter is you don't know, not with 100% certainty that you will get a return on your investment or certainly not in the way that you think, right? So second, people go into these ventures, we'll call them, without clear ideas about what success looks like or what it means. So how do you know if you've even hit the target? And people think something wasn't a success and then maybe it kind of was. And this is where I see people get into trouble with shiny object syndrome. And they're like, I worked so hard and I'm always working so hard because you haven't given yourself enough time to test anything, to track it, and then to tweak it. If you're always chucking it out for the next thing, you never go through that process. And I'm only talking because I know I've been there, I've done that. And you know how they say, if you're ever pointing one finger out at someone else or something else, three are pointing back at you. So guilty as charged, right? So what if it is a success in that you survived your first one? You figured out what works what didn't work, and what you would do differently next time. Maybe you figured out how to get a few people to come. How can you get more people to come the next time? What if that was a success, right? Sometimes we put too much stress and pressure on ourselves to fill up the Zoom room, right? Just because it can hold 100 attendees. If this is your first one and you don't have anybody on your email list, 10 people or something like that, then how can we expect to get 100 people in the Zoom room? Unless, of course, you know how to do advertising, paid advertising, and you're willing to put that out, right? So what if you also figured out what you don't like to do? We put so much emphasis on getting our money back when we don't even really have enough data to make a solid conclusion. So yeah, it might be nice to make some money on the first go. But, and I hate to say this, I hate to be the one to say this, 
is that realistic? And just hear me out for a second, because this is how I was thinking about it the other day. When I have someone come to me and they expect right out the gate to make money or they expect to make all the money back, like within the first 30 days, I'm like, hmm, did we expect to make money on our clinicals when we were still deep in the learning phase, super wet behind the ears, really didn't know what we were doing. We were still just practicing our skills and gathering skills and gathering data and feedback, right? But why do we expect to make money immediately in our business, especially when there are so many things to learn? Now, I'm not saying that there are not exceptions to this rule. I'm not saying that at all. And I'm not trying to discourage you from even attempting to start because you don't think you'll make money. If you've listened to me long enough, you know that that is not my MO at all. Like if anything, I'm like, let's come up with a plan. Let's figure out what it will take to make your money back and sooner rather than later. But also let's know like these are the elements and these are the things that you have going for you. These are a few gaps in your knowledge. And where do we, where do we bridge the gap? How do we bridge the gap? And then how fast or how slow you do that is on you, right? Sometimes we come in with a leg up. Like, for example, if, if I think about it, one of the reasons why I made money out of the gate when I started my contracting company was because I already had seven, six or seven years in the field as a physical therapist. I wasn't trying to learn a whole bunch of new skills. Like I knew how to interview. So then it basically was interviewing to get contracts. I did have to learn a little bit of skill, like how to set up an LLC, how to write a contract, how to do the bookkeeping and things like that. But that wasn't necessary to make the money. I already had the skill of being a therapist. I already had the skill of interviewing. So yes, those skills were needed to get there. And so I just, I don't want to discourage you. I absolutely want you to take action. But because we know the sooner you take action and the more consistently you take action, the faster you're going to get results. But I also want you to, if you can, release the expectation and just try to have some fun. Just try to follow your gut, right? That's what we're talking about today. Because that was, if you, if you want to think about treating it like more like clinicals, right? More like getting an education and getting all the learning out of it that you can with the expectation that you will eventually make money as long as you don't quit. That was a huge mistake I made in the beginning. I had so many things to learn. Like everything that I do today, I, I know I'm working several skills that are different than the skill sets I used as a physical therapist, right? And when I started, I had so many things to learn and it, the gurus, I call them, made it seem like it was going to be so easy to quit the nine to five and work four hours a week live anywhere and join a new rich. And you know which book I'm talking about, right? And so I was talking to a colleague the other day and it was so funny. We had a, a little giggle because both of us read the, that book and we were like, if that is truly the mentality that you go into this with, you are not going to work hard enough to even put yourself in a position to be able to have a four hour work week. It's just not gonna happen. Because like I said, in the beginning, there's so many things you have to learn in terms of skills. And there's so much stuff you have to get over in terms of the mental gauntlet, the mindset. And that's one of the things we talked about last weekend was the gauntlet. All of these things where that you have to get through to get to the other side of success and where people get stuck, right? So now for processing your ideas, how do you know how to process your ideas? and I thought I would call this follow your gut to find the money because I literally just woke up with the idea about three weeks before the summit that that's what the right thing to do was. That I knew these amazing women that had been in the online space, some of them already had programs ready to go. They were sitting on them, some of them holding them back because they were like, oh my goodness, this is not the right time to launch. Stuff is happening. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is the best time to launch because people have time now. People finally know that there is no such thing as certainty and that anything can change in a moment and you want to be able to direct your destiny rather than be at the mercy of it. 
And so I was like, I was just compelled to get up and do this thing. I had no expectation of making money. I had, it was a free event that there was an upsell to the VIP suite in the hopes that I would be able to recoup some of the money that I spent, that I invested in order to put this on. It's not free, right? So I had to spend money and of course, time and energy and what have you to put this event on. And I unexpectedly became an affiliate of one of the speakers programs, but the intention, the energy behind it, the intention was to get this information out there as quickly as possible to as many people as possible. So your question might be, was it a success? And I think absolutely in my book, because I didn't have that expectation of how much money I thought I was going to make or I did put a goal out there after I had already started of how many people I'd love to get in the room. Did we make it? No, we made it about halfway. But in terms of was it a success? Absolutely to me because everything was on time. The speakers were amazing. They gave a lot of information. You could, I had one of the VIP attendees say that was a 10X value. Whoa. The attendees loved the presentations. The speakers, all of which who had been in the game for a while, thought it went well. So in my book, it was a success. And the the beautiful thing about that is it's a thought. I get to decide, oh, that was a success, (laughs) right? So I can't put it against any numbers because it was my first one. And why, when you're doing something for the first time, why compare yourself to other people's stats anyway? Have you ever heard the saying, comparison is the thief of joy? So my recommendation is that if you're doing something for the first time, you can come up with some numbers, sure, because then that gives you something to strive for. But how about you just choose to get through it, to learn something, to make it a fact finding or a data gathering activity? That way you can relax a little bit and just know that the hard work comes in the beginning, but this is a test. It's an experiment. You can make a hypothesis of what you think might happen right? And you just test it. You track it. And then the next time you do it, you tweak it. Don't chuck it, tweak it. (laughs) And then another thing that hit me as I was thinking about this this morning was this wasn't actually my first time throwing events because my first non-PT, non-network marketing business, like my first quote real business to me anyway, was an alternative fitness event company. I scheduled events all around Atlanta which meant that I had to know how to put them together. I needed to know a bit about project management. I needed to know how to get the attendees excited, how to get the buzz up to coordinate with the studio and gym owners. Like I came into this event with those skill sets. So all of that to say, when I had that intuitive hit that, ooh, this would be fun or we need to do this, that I was compelled, right? To follow your gut and you will find the money. It can be tempting to do what everybody else is doing, right? And some people that are very loud, they're very, very in your face with their marketing and they're shouting from the rooftops, right? It can be tempting to think everybody's doing this, so I should be doing this too. But sometimes you have to check in with yourself and ask, what do I want to do? What am I naturally drawn to? What sounds fun? So I ask you. What do you want to do? What are you naturally drawn to? What sounds like fun? Because putting that summit together was incredibly difficult work. It was a lot of work and I loved it. And I made some money, but that was an afterthought, not the primary focus. So what is that thing for you? It doesn't have to be summits. What is that thing for you? Now, if you need help finding it, consider joining us for the Launch Plan Workshop on Friday, May 15th, 2020. We asked all the presenters to come up with something small and simple for our colleagues that they could take it, run, and apply right away to make some extra income while they were furloughed or to start to pivot if they're at that point in their career. 
So during the launch plan workshop, we will put together your launch plan so that you can make some decisions and finally get started. We'll talk about how to find your thing in terms of your niche, your people, what's your best formula for getting out the word post pandemic? Like what might that be? Even if you have a small email list and or you hate social media, how to work through the fear and uncertainty in the process because it's gonna be there. Just doesn't mean that you need to let fear drive the bus, okay? So if you wanna join us, go to tavanadenise.com forward slash summit to get the details and save your spot. And if you just wanna come and connect with other women in healthcare who are building lifestyle businesses, go to tavanadenise.com forward slash join to get access. And I'll talk to you next week.